Hello and welcome to another one of our Short Shots videos. This time we're going to do something just a little unusual, where we will focus on one particular type of food. In this instance, Asian hot pots. And then at the end of the video, we're going to show you just how easy it is to do a hot pot at home. And stick around to the end of this video for one bomb of a dessert. I've had the opportunity to enjoy hot pot from different countries around Asia, either in that country or at home here in the USA. I've tried Vietnamese hot pot, Korean hot pot, Taiwanese style hot pot, Thai style hot pot in Thailand, and some of the best hot pot style dishes I've ever had in Japan where the different styles of hot pot fall under the umbrella of nabimono. And I've been able to try the three distinctly different styles of shabu shabu, sukiyaki, and yoshinabe. Hot pot is thought to have originated by most scholars in Mongolia. And from Mongolia, it spread across China and into the other Asian countries surrounding China. China itself has seven, eight, or nine different variations on hot pot depending on who you talk to, with many different regional varieties. Mongolian hot pot, where meat is king, mostly lamb or horse meat. But as it spread out, the list of ingredients grew and grew and grew. I'm not going to try to read all of these things. If interested in the details, you're welcome to go back and freeze the video and look to your heart's content. Suffice it to say, as you can see from this list of ingredients, almost anything goes. We're going to start our hot pot journey in Japan with some wonderful shabu shabu. The umbrella name for all things hot pot in Japan is nabimono. There are at least seven distinct varieties of nabimono along with at least 10 more regional variations on the theme. Three of the most common and important hot pot variations in Japan are sukiyaki, yoshinabe, and shabu shabu. Normally hot pot is an individual cooking experience, but this time it was dunked in the hot pot by servers who endeavored to cook the particular beef that you'll see in just a moment to perfection every time. And despite the fact that someone else was cooking it, you can see in this picture here, individual hot pots were still used. And here's why such careful handling was required. This beef is the most expensive beef in all of Japan, Japanese Miyazaki Wagyu beef. Beef from the Miyazaki Prefecture in Japan has won the right to call itself the best beef in the world by winning three of Japan's Wagyu Olympics. Yes, that's a thing. Look it up. We're going to go now to what is widely considered the homeland of the hot pot, China. My first experience with Chinese hot pot came in Datong. This was an important introduction as it introduced me to the yin and yang style of hot pot and some of the more unusual ingredients such as camel hump, donkey meat, and lamb testicles. Next we're going to make a stop in Tianjin where more standard ingredients are used, including seafood, lamb, and beef. In this instance, we each got our own individual little hot pot sitting in front of us, boiling away, accompanied by red wine and a potent, clear Chinese liquor that you see on the left side. The idea behind any hot pot is usually to build up the broth by adding vegetables and noodles first then some mushrooms and other vegetables. Different types of tofu, followed by bits of meat. Depending upon your location, that will either be seafood or various slices from other animals. While hot pots can definitely be vegan or vegetarian, this is usually not the case. 
Our next stop was back in Beijing at a popular hot pot chain called Heidi Lao. Heidi Lao has hundreds of locations in China and around the world as well. They also feature a four section hot pot that goes from mild to quite spicy. And speaking of quite spicy, we're now going to Chongqing for a Sichuan style hot pot. And as you can see, they are not shy with the peppers. And while this was one of my favorite hot pot experiences, it wasn't because of the taste of the hot pot. From beef with additional pepper rubbed into the surface to frog legs, everything in this hot pot was rendered insanely hot. To cool down, we had some fried milk with a sweet and sour sauce. To really cool down, we were introduced to the tradition of drinking hot tea to cool off. Our host took us to a tea shop where the tea sommelier listened to what we had just eaten and offered up a cooling tea with a batch of fruit. It's actually easy to enjoy hot pot at home and here are some tips on just how to do that. First, pick a day that sort of lends itself to this type of meal. Put the fire on, turn on some nice soft music, and enjoy your hot pot experience. We like to drink a little tea before and after using these special teacups where the dragon turns red when the hot tea is added to the cup. Personally, I rather enjoy pulling the cork from a nice bottle of wine and enjoying that during and after the meal. While not strictly necessary, you will find that there are some basic tools that will make your experience better. The little cooktop and the pot are of course available from almost any Asian food store for very little money. Be sure to have a couple of extra cans of butane. And then other things that will make it more enjoyable would be like the little boiling basket you see here, a slotted spoon or two, and chopsticks of course. And I would throw in a set of tongs or two. But hot pot is really more about what you put into it. We like to add veggies like these weeds or even Napa cabbage would be fine. Noodles that can stand up to the hot broth like mung bean noodles. Mushrooms, squid, meatballs, shrimp, scallops, lamb, beef, and pork. And you will need a dipping sauce to spice things up a little bit. We like the commercially available sacha sauce that you see here. As far as the thinly sliced meat you see, almost any good Asian supermarket will have a good supply already prepared for purchase. Now before you start cooking all of this nice stuff, you will have to have something to cook it in. And while the hot pot stock can be something as simple as salted water, I prefer to build mine on the stove prior to filling the hot pot. Here's the soup base that I usually make up, but you can easily find soup base packets in any Asian food store. Once your hot pot is happily bubbling away, start by adding some of the ingredients that take a little longer to cook, like the vegetables, noodles, and mushrooms. Drop a few of the meatballs in the pot early on, because although they are already cooked, they do take a while to warm all the way through. The thinly sliced meat will cook within seconds once added to the boiling broth. When you're adding seafood, such as shrimp or raw scallops, watch them carefully so as not to overcook. I like to use the 10 Mississippi rule, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and so on. After cooking, dip everything in the sacha sauce or whatever dipping sauce you've prepared and go to town. This is definitely a fun way to enjoy a meal. And now at least you have a little insight into how at least we do it. So as promised up front, here is a fun little clip of a dessert we experienced in China. And while it's slow to get there, the payoff in the end is kind of neat. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. And 
just when we thought it was a dud, the chocolate casing split and revealed the inside, which looks a little disgusting, but is actually grapefruit, raspberry juice, and we were told hazelnuts, but they look like ginkgo nuts to me. And despite its appearance, it was quite tasty. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe. I'll be posting some more short shot videos as I dip into the archives while we wait for our next trip. In the meantime, check out some more of our full length travel videos and our short shot videos at T's Cruise and Travel Muse. Cheers and happy and safe travels.